Hi, students, parents, and teachers. We continue to pray for you. We miss you. And we look forward to the day we can see you again. Today, I am wearing the once a warrior, always a warrior Westwood shirt. This is to show my love and support for all of the Westwood family. We had a great day this past Friday as many staff, teachers, and family visited all of Westwood's seniors at their homes to deliver a senior class of 2020 sign and gifts that were presented to our seniors. We love our senior class so much. Today, I want to announce a surprise for our seniors. As the rest of the school will end classwork on Thursday, May 21st, the seniors' last day of classes will be on Friday, May 15th. I hope this will be a nice treat for our seniors that have missed out on so much these last two months. I had the wonderful privilege to speak to a former graduate of Westwood Christian School on Friday, our state of Florida's Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez. She was a real encouragement to me and wanted me to know that she and the governor appreciated our prayers for them as they make important decisions each day. She appreciates the hard work by our students and teachers each day with distance learning at Westwood Christian School and how thankful she is for a school like Westwood Christian. I told her we were so proud of the hard work she is doing for our state. Please keep praying for her, the governor, and all of our leaders as they make important decisions. I want to make all of our school parents and students aware of our plans for cleaning out desks from the preschool and elementary students' classrooms and lockers for the middle and high school students. The teachers will do this cleaning this week and beginning on Monday, May 4th, we will have designated days and times according to your last name for you to come by the school to pick up your child's belongings. These belongings will be in plastic bags. On this same pickup day will be an opportunity for parents and students to drop off any school property such as library books, sports athletic uniforms, program grammar books, and anything else that might be property of the school. We will be sending out a detailed email this week explaining the specifics of the actual day for you to do the pick up and drop off starting on Monday, May 4th. For their class on Thursday, April 30th, our high school students will be participating in an online virtual webinar titled Answers to Culture's Biggest Questions, led by a well-known Christian speaker and educator, Ben Shetler. We are excited to offer this opportunity to train our young people at Westwood Christian School to continue to develop a strong biblical worldview. This will take place on Thursday of this week from 1 to 3 p.m. I want to encourage all of our students to keep working hard and doing your best with distance learning instruction. I also want to encourage all of the parents of our Westwood Christian students to support them to do the best they can with their distance learning instruction. I want to thank our teachers for their continued hard work and dedication each day as they instruct their students through distance learning. A verse of encouragement is Deuteronomy 31.8, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Please know that we continue to be here for you and pray for you. Have a great week and God bless you. At this time, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your many blessings to us. I thank you for each of our students and our teachers at Westwood Christian School. I thank you for the hard work and the dedication day in and day out through distance learning that our students and teachers are doing. 
I'm so thankful for their dedication to working hard and trying their best and striving for excellence, even in this strange and unique time that we are in. Lord, it is such an encouragement that we can trust you, we can have faith in you, we can rely on you for strength, guidance, wisdom, and direction as we go through this journey that we are on. Lord, may you continue to bless everyone in the Westwood Christian School family. And Lord, may we soon be uh, back to normal and back to a normal Westwood Christian School. Lord, in the meantime, may you continue to bless and direct and just take care of us, Lord. And we thank you so much for the parents that support Westwood Christian School. Father, may you continue to be honored and glorified, and may this be a special day of chapel for our Westwood Christian School students. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, another senior, Micah Brink, will be sharing a testimony for you to be encouraged by. Hey guys, I hope you guys are having a great time at your homes, uh, whether it be in the morning or at night for you guys. Um, it might be night because that's when I do most of my work is late at night. So um, I, nevertheless, I hope you guys are doing well and your families are doing well and you guys are all staying healthy. I, I genuinely miss, genuinely miss all you guys uh, being here and singing and worship and um, volleyball and just seeing you guys like in the hallways. It really, I, I really do miss it. And so I'm glad, I'm glad we had the opportunity and I'm glad that the rest of you, um, juniors and below, uh, have, an, have a whole another year to experience that. I just want to share um, just, just a, a quick couple few points about um, what God has taught me during this time. Um, the first one I want to talk about is uh, my parents. My parents have been super uh, supportive of me and um, just a, as well as all the other seniors. They're always there for us. And for, for example, the drive-by that uh, went on in the couple, past couple days, um, they really do love us, and they really do love you guys. So just give them all the love that you can during this time that we're all together. Um, one of the things that they, um, that they always tell me, especially during times like these, is think about all the people who have no hope. Like imagine having, not having the hope of Jesus Christ in your heart, and that's something that we get to be a part of and that we get to have, and we shouldn't take it for granted because imagine all the people who are going through this quarantine with no hope. They don't know what tomorrow brings. They don't know how to handle it, but we do. So we should be taking this calmly and um, being an encouragement to others who may not know Christ and who may not have that hope. So I encourage you um, to do that as I strive to do that every day. Another thing I want to talk about is appreciate what you have. I know, I know a lot of people have said that, um, but it's true. And I'm glad, I think, I think I speak for the rest of the seniors when I say I'm glad that I realized what I had before I lost it. Like, we appreciated volleyball, we appreciated our teachers, our parents, um, the opportunity to go on so many different trips. It was just an amazing experience, multiple experiences that I had here. And I'm really glad, I'm really grateful to God that we had those opportunities before they were taken away from us. So I encourage you guys to, as the, as the years go by, um, as the summer goes by, to really just take every moment and and cherish it because we won't have it forever and this is a this is a perfect example of that as um, our school year has has um, gone and it looks like we won't um, officially be coming back we don't know yet but I just encourage you guys to appreciate what you have before it's taking away from you I, I know I, I have and um, the, the rest of us have as seniors um, the, the second to last thing I have is um, we don't deserve anything. We don't, so everything that God has given us, he's given us because he wants to. He's blessed us with a chance to go to, to a, a Christian school and a chance to get to know others and uh, others in the faith. And none of this, we don't deserve any of it. So a lot of, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, we got our senior year stripped away from us. We got it taken from us. It, like as if we deserved it in the first place, but really God has given us this gift that a lot, that the majority of the kids around the world don't even get to have. So I encourage you not to uh, take it that way. 
I know that has been taken away from us, um, from teachers, staff, students, all of us, but I encourage you not to um, just, just say it as we deserved it, because we really didn't. This is all a gift of God in the first place. So I encourage you guys to um, just, just do that, have that mindset. And one last thing I want to share with you guys before um, we go to our chapel worship is a verse that um, sp really spoke to my heart um, in the journey, which we do in my youth group here at Westwood. And uh, I just want to share it with you guys. It's Luke 12, 28. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? That's Luke 12, 28. And really what God is talking about here is how much um, we should be trusting him because simply because he created, he created us, we're in his image. If, he, if God clothes the grass, and the grass the next day is thrown into the oven, we eat it as, as bread, as, as, our, as a substance, then how much more does God care for us and is taking care of us even during this, this time? So I encourage you guys to have that mindset. Think, it's just crazy to me how God clothes the grass, clothes um, the trees. He takes care of the birds, and yet we're on his mind. The birds and the grass are on his mind, and so are we. So I encourage you guys to to have that in your minds as we go through this quarantine. I really genuinely miss all of you guys, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard going through these next months um, without you. So I'm grateful to everyone here, the staff here at Westwood. Thank you so much for pouring into our lives, and I hope you guys enjoy, enjoy the chapel worship today. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for chapel today. We're gonna be singing two songs, 10,000 Reasons and Who You Say I Am, so please don't be afraid to sing along.
Welcome. It is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, right? And normally we wouldn't be meeting on chapel on Wednesday, right? Nor would we be doing it through a video and through streaming. And so it is different, right? Normally we'd be meeting on Monday all together here in this room inside the gym. And normally we would be coming right from our first hour class, right? We would have all the different classes coming in from their different routes outside the doors. I'm looking at the doors right now. And, um, Right after chapel, you guys would be going to your second hour class, being dismissed by grades, right? Always the seniors first, then the juniors, then so on, right? Then the, always the sixth graders, the last ones that have to leave, right? So normally, things are different. Um, and we've had to obviously have things changed. And we're all in a different format of learning and interacting. And so while things have changed, that is true, there's some things that haven't changed, right? We're still learning. We're still um, living at home. We're still interacting with our parents. Um, some things haven't changed. But one thing that hasn't changed is our relationship with God. And that's where we're going to go today. And some of you today might be home by yourselves um, today. Maybe you might have your siblings with you. Maybe your parents are home. Maybe they're helping with your assignments. Or maybe even your parents are at home working from home themselves. And so our way of life has changed. Things are not as they were. And I've been talking to teachers, and I've been just talking about how their online classes have been going and what's been, what type of assignments they've been giving. But one thing that they've all been saying is that they've been saying how much, how much they miss their students. They miss every single one of you. Um, every single teacher is missing their students right now. And some of you might find that hard to believe, but it's true. They are. They're missing you guys. Um, so let it be known that you are missed, not, ju not just by Mr. Thompson, not just by Mr. Schroeder, okay? You're missed by every single one of your, your teachers. So I was even talking to my seventh grade students yesterday and on a Zoom call, and they were even saying how much they miss school. I never thought we'd hear those words out of their mouth. It was um, every single day while they're in school, they're saying how much school's boring and annoying, but now they're saying they miss it, right? So I'm sorry to, to call you guys out, but I just want to let, let it know. I'm sure all of you are thinking this, not just seventh graders, but you guys are missing school at some point or another. You miss 
coming to school, you miss having that schedule, you miss seeing your friends, you miss um, seeing your teachers and um, getting to talk about the cool things that you did over the weekend. And so things are different. And it makes us miss what we once had, right? And so for many of us, um, another thing is that a lot of us have missed spring break, right? Missed spring break vacations. They were kind of canceled. Um, and also some of us had birthday parties. Maybe we missed or missed going to a friend's birthday party. Um, sports season just ended, um, just ended out of the blue. They just cut short. And a lot of you are impacted by that. And other plans are just postponed. We don't know when we're going to get to those plans. The future has just been left uncertain. The truth is we just don't know what the future holds. Um, but our Father who is in heaven does, right? While we are uncertain about what is happening, we can still have confidence that God is in control. We really can't have that confidence. I pray that God really uses this time throughout the world, worldwide epidemic, to point people to trust in him. And I think that can happen. I think you guys maybe have to do this yourself. You have to really just trust God um, for what he's doing in this situation. And we really cannot really do much else. We, we ourselves can't go out and heal this, this cure, right? We, we can't do that. Um, we can't just say, shoe fly, be, be gone, right? We can't do that. But we have to rely and trust in God. Um, there are many things that is really left uncertain at this time. Um, it's left uncertain to us. Um, for right now, the stock market, right, finances, people's money, people's bank accounts, it's uncertain. They don't know what's going to happen. People are fearing of a next, next Great Depression. Now, that, might, that probably won't happen, but that could be a fear. The concerns for the health of loved ones. Some of you might be concerned for maybe your family's health. Maybe you have a family member impacted by this epidemic and, and some sort or another, and you're, you're concerned, you're worried. You're worried about their health. And th that is a completely um, honest thing to be worried about. Um, companies, right, they're people's job securities. They're, they don't know what their future will be. Maybe they're furloughed, which means they're not working right now. Maybe they were fired. Um, maybe they just have to work from home. There's all these different types of work um, ideas that are going on that you don't know what's going on. And companies are just letting people go and cutting spending. Um, there's a lot of things that are left uncertain. Because of this uncertainty, even more so, needs to point us to God. Because if there's one thing that is certain, is God's faithfulness to us. Um, he will never be um, shaky. He will never be uncertain. His truths are everlasting. His word tells us that. So no matter where you are um, today, I figure that one thing that we should probably focus on is our prayer life, our, our prayers to God. And no matter where you're at in your prayer life, I think that this is a good reminder. Um, first, right, I have three points for why we should pray today. And then after, I have a simple outline that can help guide us maybe in praying, okay? So the title of today's message is Why Should We Pray Today? That is the title. So the first point I have here is that we receive a command to pray. And I find that in Ephesians 6.18. Let me read it to you. And it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And so we see this, this word all really being used there a few times, right? It's used three times. And it's really just emphasizing all prayer, all perseverance, all endurance, right? And so um, under that main point, I have pray continually, right? The first point being we receive a command to pray. And then underneath that, pray continually. So Paul commands us to pray. We have a command to pray. It's not just something that's optional. It's not just something that you can do uh, when you really, really, really need it. But it's commanded to us that we should pray. Not just to pray, uh, but to always be praying, to consistently be praying. How many of you have ever stopped in the middle of the day or before a big situation just to pray really quickly? Maybe, maybe it's before a test. 
you have a big test coming up or a quiz that you didn't study for, right? And you just need to pray and say, Lord, I, I really need your help on this test, on this quiz. Um, I really, really don't want to do badly. And I really would just need your help just to remember what I studied. Or maybe it's before a, a game, a big game against uh, a big rival on, a, on, a, on the field, on the court. Or maybe it's for a free throw, right? Or before a free kick, a penalty kick. Or maybe even at, in that bat, a big at bat in the, on the baseball field, the softball field. And you just really quick pray and you just know, Lord, I need your strength because I know if it were left to me, I couldn't do this. Um, but I need your help. And I know I've been there. I know some of you have been there, okay? So don't just think that um, you're alone, okay? Or maybe you just begin to talk to God by yourself while you're in your room or maybe by yourself just in times of really loneliness and just really thinking about um, what's going on in your life. You just begin to pray. Paul tells us that this is how we should pray, not just every day, but every hour. We should be constantly talking to God almost every hour, just saying, God, um, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for helping me um, get to know this person better, become a friend, help me, help me through my day, that I had a great night of sleep, whatever it is. We should always be talking to God because he is always with us, right? If we had a friend next to us, walking next to us every single hour of the day, it would be weird if we never said anything to them, right? You're always next to someone, but you never ever talk to them. That's weird. Um, and it's weird that we don't talk to God as much as we should. And so Paul repeats himself emphatically in this verse to help us realize that we should always be praying consistently. Um, the next sub point I have here is pray with endurance. So he um, commands us to pray, to pray continually, and also to pray with endurance. And so that's what we see here. One thing that Paul tells us to do is to pray with perseverance, with endurance, to not be lazy in short. Don't be lazy. You should have a systematic system of your praying. You should think, okay, I'm going to pray um, at this time of the day, right? Right before I go to bed, right when I wake up. I should pray each meal, right? All that, that, that is having a plan to pray. We should also plan uh, to pray sporadically, right? Um, for, as an example of this, I thought of the Summer Olympics. I know the Summer Olympics for 2020 have been postponed to 2021. And unfortunately, that's happened because of this epidemic. But nonetheless, I do enjoy watching a lot of the events in the Summer Olympics. Um, one of the events, and I don't sit down and watch all of this because it's really long, but is the marathon race. And when you watch these runners run, 26.2 miles, that's a long ways. They are really showing their endurance. Not only their endurance, they're showing their speed too. They run at an incredibly fast pace for 26.2 miles. And they do it so quickly. Um, no one can watch those runners and say that they're lazy. You know why? Because anyone that watches them knows that they trained. You see the anxiety. You see the, the anguish on their face while they're running. You can see the, their body um, being stressed as they run. And so they run with endurance. And you look at them and say, they, there's no way that they're lazy. You know what they do? They run every single day. They train every single day for that one race, the Olympics. They run so hard every single day so that they can be on the podium there at the Olympics receiving a medal. And so no one can say that they are lazy. And so this made me think that as a runner with endurance, Paul uses that idea pretty often in his writing. But just like a runner, we should not be lazy, but we should pray with endurance like these runners. And what they do to build that endurance is that they run every day. And as they run every day, we should pray every day in every hour, really. Just like runners run every day and train to get closer to their goal, Paul is telling us that we need to pray every day to get closer to our God. So that was really what Paul is saying is pray with endurance so that you can get closer to your God. The second point I have here is we receive mercy and grace through prayer. 
And the passage that I find that is in Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We need grace and mercy. And we really need that, especially I think is showing in this time period, right? Um, our, our world is at an end where we just don't know what's going to happen. And we need God's mercy and we need his grace more than any time. God's grace is a blessing upon us. This is kind of definition there. Grace is God's blessing upon us. And mercy is God's compassion towards us. Now is one of those times the whole world needs God's grace and his mercy. Now, I can't put this lightly. I think you guys know this, like I said before. We need grace and mercy. We can ask for grace by asking for protection, right? Protection and health. Protection for your families. Protection for our nation. We can ask for mercy by asking God to have compassion on us. So we can ask for these two things. We can ask for grace or for mercy in these two different ways. Only with God's compassion will we overcome this epidemic, right? That's the only way because God can do anything he desires. And he can end this in a, in a snap of a finger he can end the epidemic, right? He can end the coronavirus. He can end anything. So we need his grace. We need his mercy. And we need to pray for it. It doesn't just come randomly, but it's something we need to be pursuing. We can only receive, this sub-point here, this grace and mercy through prayer. We are told to approach boldly before God to ask for grace and mercy. That's what this verse is saying in Hebrews 4, that we need to approach God boldly before his throne. In fact, his throne is called the throne of grace. And that's what that's saying is that throne has unlimited grace. It is unlimited. There is no end to his grace. That's like, I don't know how many of you have bank accounts. I assume most of you, right? You go to the bank, you go um, deposit your money, you withdraw your money, you have your little debit card, right? And you use that to pay for things. But when you go to the bank, you only have so much money in the bank that you can withdraw. So say maybe you have $1,000 and you have $2,000. I don't know how much. I'm sure some of you have a lot of money, right? Some of you maybe don't have any money. I don't know inside the bank. But if you go to the bank, there's only so much money you can take out, right? Um, however much money you take out is how much money you have in the bank. And so at some point, it's going to reach zero. But one thing about God's grace, if you go to it like it's a bank, and you keep withdrawing, guess what? It's never going to reach zero. You can continually take from God's grace, and he will gladly give it to you. All Paul says here is that, or the, the writer of Hebrews says, is that we just need to go before God and ask of it boldly, not afraid, not fearfully, ask boldly with confidence for that grace. Say, God, I know you can give this to me, this grace that I need to get through this situation. Please, I need this. Can you give it to me? And boldly ask, and he will give it to you freely. That's what, Paul, that's what the, the writer here says. He says, go ahead and ask boldly. For some of you, you've been doing this. I know you have. Uh, maybe you're doing it for you or for your family. Maybe you have a big decision coming up. Um, there's one group of people in here or, that I'm talking to that have been praying. I know they have. I know some of them have specifically for what they're going to be doing in their future. And that's the seniors, right? They have a big decisions coming up. They have a lot of big decisions. They have to figure out maybe where they're going to go to school. Maybe they get their education. Some of them, it's for what job, what career am I going to pursue? And they have some big decisions. Maybe some of them, should I go out of state for college? Should I stay home in Miami? Um, should I um, go here? Should I do this? Should I make this decision? And a lot of you have these hard decisions ahead. And you're not alone. People all around the world are making these decisions, right? Especially in this time. But one thing that we are given is God's grace, right? God gives us his grace to the, the guidance to get through these decisions. Um, 
you can seek God for his grace daily, whatever circumstance you're in. So you can ask for guidance, right, for you seniors to make decisions, maybe for other students that have other family decisions to make. Maybe there's things going on in your household that you just need guidance for. Maybe in your personal life, in friendships, and relationships, whatever it is. God can give you guidance, and that's grace, right? Asking God for his guidance is asking for his grace to give you wisdom, right? And so God knows our circumstances. He knows what we're doing. He knows what type of situation we're in. He knows you. He knows how you feel. He knows um, how to comfort you. He knows when you feel alone. He truly knows your heart. He does. There's no hiding it. It's not like whatever you think in the back of your mind when you're all alone is all kept to yourself. It's not. God knows where you're hurting. He knows what is hurting your life. He knows who hurt you. He knows um, that you feel alone. He knows that you feel um, lost. He knows that. He's not oblivious to it. But you know what? You have to ask for guidance. You have to ask for his help. You have to ask boldly before his throne of grace. And he'll give it to you freely, abundantly. It's going to keep pouring out. It'll never reach zero. If you're hurting, if you're alone, if you're lost, if you're confused, you're not alone. God is there. and He's ready to comfort you. He's ready to give you guidance. He's ready to give you what you need to get through it. So go to him in prayer. And then the last thing here I have, the third point, we receive freedom from anxiety through prayer. We find that Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want you, right now, at home, right, wherever you're watching this video, I want you to think and admit to yourself if this is true, okay? Admit to yourself if you are anxious or concerned. How many of you are anxious or concerned right now, huh? How many of you? And it could be about the situation, right, right the epidemic. You're like, I really don't want to get sick. I really don't want my parents to get sick. I really don't want my grandparents to get sick. I really don't want them to get sick. And you're really, really concerned. Or maybe um, you're really concerned because maybe your parents, maybe they've been put off of work for now. Maybe they don't, have, they don't have work right now. And you're concerned. You really are. And you're anxious about it because you know how that affects you. You know it affects them. You know it affects your family. And you really are concerned. And that is completely normal to be anxious, concerned. That is completely normal. Everyone is in the same boat. You are not alone. There are 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders all across the world, just like you, who are experiencing this similar situation. You are not alone in this, okay? It's, it's not specific to you, okay? But there's one thing that can be specific to you, and that is that you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be concerned. You know why? Because God has given us a reason to be free from anxiety. Um, we, all, we all have a way of not needing to be anxious and a way of knowing peace during this trying time. That freedom of anxiousness, that freedom of worrying, it comes through prayer. You know how it comes through prayer? is because when you pray, you put your faith in God because when you pray, right, you're, you're talking to God, you're putting your worries on him. Say, Lord, I'm really worried about this. I really am concerned about this. Please help. Guess what? God carries that burden. You're taking your worries, you're taking your anxieties and placing them on God's lap. You no longer have that weight on you. You put it on God. And so when you pray, you put all your concerns, all your worries on God. And guess what? He is big enough. He is strong enough to carry all of our burdens, to carry all the, words, all the world's burdens. You know why? He's done it once before, right? When all of our sin was taken from our hearts, from our lives, 
and place upon the cross, upon Jesus. Jesus took that burden. He took it. He took all of our sins. It's, um, and those that have accepted Jesus Christ have received salvation through Christ. And so we can do the same thing with our worries, our anxieties. Take it, pray to God, and place it on him. He will carry it. He will figure out for you what the solution is. You don't have to worry no more. There is understanding that passes all earthly understanding, and that comes through God. Isn't this what you desire? Don't you wish to have a peace that the world doesn't know? The world is worried. They're, they're anxious. They're confused. They're turning to the world leaders. They're turning to the doctors. You know what? They don't have the answers right now. They don't. Maybe one day they will with a, with a vaccine. Who knows? But God, he always has the answer. He says, bring your burdens here. I would love to take them. Give them to me. Let me carry it for you. He can handle it, and he wants to. <clears throat> so with these thoughts, let us commit ourselves to pray every day. We're just really concerned about our praying and our desire to know God better. Let us commit ourselves to pray. After this message, why don't you pray? Just throw your burdens on him. Throw your burdens on God. He wants to know your burdens. Ask him for guidance in your life for what you need. Ask him for help. God knows us, and he wants us to know him. So let's pray every day and lift our words to God and to pray for our leaders, to pray for our families and our church, and let us thank God for what he has done for us. Let us give all thanks to God. Let's not hold anything back. Lay your worries, lay your anxiousness upon him. Um, ask for grace and mercy. You know what? Pray continually and pray with endurance. That's really all it is, is praying, right? Put your trust in God. Um, we'll close there, but I really want to just push you guys to pray. Why don't you try to pray after this chapel message? Why don't you try to pray tonight before you go to bed? Um, make a plan to pray. Make a plan that you're going to pray today, that you're going to pray tomorrow. Make a certain time of the day that you're going to find time to pray and to put your life in God's hands. Why don't we close with a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your love towards us. We know that you're in control and that you are God and no one else is in control like you are. There's no doctor. There's no world leader. There's no scientist. There's no news reporter that has the control that you do, Lord. You are in control of all things, and you are ready to give to us what we need when we ask for it boldly. We ask that you would bless each student in our school and their families, that you would be with them in this time, that you would just give them strength, that you would give them the ability to endure all things. We ask that you be with the families, that you be with those that have lost jobs, that have, don't, that have um, been out of work, um, and that you would just really be with them in this time, to really show them through this and to give them the wisdom and understanding that they need. We ask that you give us all wisdom daily and help us to come more to you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.